For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night he, when He was betrayed took bread, and when He had given thanks, He broke it. And He said, This is My body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of Me. In the same way, He also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in My blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of Me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. There is no more sacred time during our worship gatherings together than when we pause to remember the communion or the Lord's Supper. It is an opportunity to, to stop, to pause from the, uh, the hectic pace of our daily lives and to remember and to reflect, to remember what Jesus has done for us, to take uh, the bread that represents the body and the cup that represents the blood poured out for us and to reflect on the sacrifice that makes possible the salvation of our souls. All month long, we're talking about the spiritual discipline of worship. And this Sunday night, the Sunday before Easter, or Palm Sunday on the Christian calendar, we're going to be focusing exclusively on the communion, on the Lord's Supper, during which time we will remember, we will reflect, and we will rejoice over the meaning of the Supper for us. And as we head into this, this week before Easter, uh, we will remember that as Jesus rode into Jerusalem on that colt of a donkey, He was riding into the final week of His life. On Thursday, He would gather with His disciples in the upper room to celebrate the Passover feast together, the, the feast during which He gave that instruction that I read a minute ago. On Friday, He'll be on the cross for us and laid in a tomb but on Sunday, that tomb will be empty. And it's an appropriate time for us to focus on the Supper for just this very reason. Uh, the Lord's Supper, of course, has its roots in the Old Testament celebration, the Feast of Passover, which was itself a celebration of what God had done to rescue His people, to redeem His people. Is it any coincidence then that Jesus gives this instruction to His disciples as they're together celebrating the Passover feast. That He takes these, these emblems, the, the bread and the, the cup, that are already so full of meaning in the Passover, and He, and he gives them even new meaning, even a more full meaning, that they would come to represent something even more. Throughout the ages, the church has continued this practice and even struggled with it. Uh, in the beginning, the church practiced it as a part of their agape feasts when they came together for assembly. Uh, along the way, some, it seems, forgot the meaning of the supper, which is why Paul writes 1 Corinthians to start with. But as he called them back to its central meaning, to its primary purpose, it was really about two things. It was about drawing near to God through communing with Him and drawing near to one another as we participate in the practice together. We see this in Paul's letter to the church at Corinth in chapter 10 and verse 16 and 17 when he writes, the, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. That word translated in the ESV and in the NIV as participation is the word koinonia, and it's the word I talk about all the time. It means fellowship relationship, a sharing of life together. This Sunday night, and, and then again, every time we gather for worship, let us remember that as we participate in this spiritual practice, that we are participating in the life of God, that we are participating in the act of Jesus. It is no empty ritual. 
It is an opportunity for us to share in our relationship with the risen Lord. 